Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding VNA's Antenna Isolation Measurements. In this presentation, we'll explain how vector network analyzers are used to measure the amount of isolation between antennas. This presentation assumes a very basic knowledge of S-parameters. If you're unfamiliar with S-parameters, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation, Understanding S-parameters, before beginning this presentation. Let's start by defining antenna isolation, also sometimes called antenna decoupling. In the modern world, antennas are often installed in close proximity to other antennas, for example, on the roof of a building, on a tower, or on a vessel, such as on a ship or an aircraft. Note too that antennas are often co-located within a device, such as a smartphone with multiple internal or integrated antennas. In either case, when antennas are close to each other, signals transmitted from one antenna can easily be coupled into other nearby antennas. This is usually undesirable because strong RF signals can create problems such as desense, intermodulation, etc. To avoid these issues, a certain amount of isolation, also referred to as insertion loss, or sometimes as path loss, should be present between the two antennas and loss on the orders of tens of dB is sufficient in most applications. There are various methods that can be used to increase antenna isolation. The first and most obvious of these is spatial separation, or simply increasing the distance between the two antennas. Another method is trying to minimize the amount of energy radiated in the direction of the other antenna by exploiting the nulls in an antenna pattern or by using different polarizations on each antenna. In addition, filters, duplexers, etc. can sometimes be used to attenuate signals that fall outside of the desired receive frequency range. One example of the importance of antenna isolation or decoupling is cellular repeater systems using bidirectional amplifiers. These systems use a donor antenna to receive a downlink signal from a base station. The downlink signals are then amplified and passed to a serving antenna to provide improved coverage within a building, etc. The uplink signals from the phone are likewise amplified and transmitted back towards the base station by the donor antenna. However, insufficient isolation between the donor and serving antennas can lead to a feedback loop, causing the amplifier to oscillate and creating significant external RF interference. Proper antenna selection and placement helps to avoid this issue by ensuring sufficient isolation between these two antennas. Antenna isolation or decoupling is normally measured using a two-port vector network analyzer or VNA. The methodology is similar to most two-port transmission measurements. A stimulus signal from the VNA is injected into one of the antennas. This signal is usually swept over the frequency range of interest. The second port is used to measure how much power was coupled into the other antenna. Depending on the direction of the measurement, this may be either an S21 or an S12 measurement. Although two port measurements are the most common, multi-port VNAs, that is VNAs with more than two ports, are sometimes used to make measurements for multi-antenna systems. And, as with most transmission measurements, a normalization should be performed whenever possible. By connecting these points together and performing a normalization, the effect of cables, connectors, etc. can be removed from the measurement. However, in cases where normalization cannot be performed at the antenna feed points, the loss in feeder cables between the VNA and the antennas must also be accounted for, since uncalibrated cable loss will cause the measured antenna isolation to appear greater than the actual isolation, especially in the case of longer or more lossy cables. And finally, be aware that other over-the-air signals can influence the measurement results. Ideally, measurements should be made when no signals, other than the VNA stimulus signal, are present. Let's look at a couple of measurement results. A typical good result is isolation of 30 to 40 dB or more over the frequency range of interest. 
A common issue is having good isolation over much of the frequency range, but poor isolation near one or more specific frequencies. In this example, we see isolation of only about 5 dB over a small section of the total frequency range. And note too that although isolation tends to be similar regardless of measurement direction, that is S21 or S12, it's often a good idea to verify this as well. Let's end with a brief summary. Antennas are often installed in close physical proximity to other antennas, and because of this, signals can more easily couple between them. If the isolation between antennas is insufficient, this can lead to many issues, such as receiver descents, intermodulation, etc. There are numerous ways to minimize coupling or increase isolation, the most common of which are increased spatial separation, antenna patterns or directionality, polarization, and filtering. The amount of isolation between two antennas is normally determined by using a two-port vector network analyzer, or VNA, to make an S21 or S12 measurement. Isolation can also be measured using multi-port VNAs, and this is particularly useful when evaluating high antenna density installations. This concludes our presentation, Understanding VNA's Antenna Isolation Measurements. If you'd like to learn more about antenna measurements, VNA's, or antenna measurement solutions from Rody and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.